on to uh, the uh, globally competitive students. The Cleveland County Promise is here to tell us about their program, and I'm not exactly sure. Mr. Green, are you going to present that? Or? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Well, I'm going to that great. Good. Mr. Chair, sure. uh, member of the school board, Dr. Boyles, I want to thank you for this opportunity to give us an opportunity to talk about Cleveland County Promise and to uh, give you an update on what we are. Uh, and, and I ask him, first of all, I want to recognize our new executive director, Ms. Chair, Ms. Chair Um uh, She just came on board this week. Uh, also in the crowd is uh, in the audience rather is uh, two of my board members, uh, Brian Bragg or Bragg and Bragg and Mr. Willie B. McIntosh. Uh, other members who could not attend, board members who could not attend was uh, Jeff Ledford uh, and Reverend Dante Murphy. Um, again, I wanted to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about the Cleveland County Promise and just be brief. Uh, a lot of you already know about the Promise, so I'll, I'll kind of be brief about the specifics of it, to kind of give you an update on some things that have happened over the last six months or so. Again, our vision is a part of the Cleveland County Promise is to make sure that we are in a position where we can provide every student who graduates from a Cleveland County school, whether that's public, private, charter, or home school, uh, tuition. Uh, we base our tuition off the most expensive university, the public university, which is University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Uh, their current tuition right now is 83, I believe 8340. It's, 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 uh, it's kind of sad that since we started this program back in 2011, when I first started doing research, the board and I, uh, North Carolina Chapel Hill was at 7311 tuition. Now it's gone up to almost 8300 dollars. Uh, just a quick glance at the Promise programs that have been implemented uh, prior to the Cleveland County Promise. Uh, the Kalamazoo Promise was first. Uh, it's been very successful. The Pittsburgh Promise is, is uh, successful as well. And as you can see, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center believes in it so much that they pledged $100 million. So they're doing matching grants up to $100 million. The El Dorado Promise uh, is very promising. Uh, not too long ago, about a month or two ago, we had the executive director from the El Dorado Promise, uh, Sylvia Thompson, to come down and give us a report and to show the success of the El Dorado Promise. Uh, and I'll share a little bit uh, about it, but one of the things that, two things that was very interesting in addition to the progress and the, the way the schools have been, uh, the, the test scores have gone up. Uh, they have built, as a result of the Promise program, they built a new high school, and that high school is seven acres under heated space. That's not the parking lot, that's not the football field, that's not the, the soccer field, that's all high school as a result of that, that, that the Promise program because they've had 33, they've had families from 33 different states and 13 foreign countries relocate to El Dorado for this Promise program. It's been very successful. The Archadelphia Promise Program is really where I adopted this when I was coaching back in 2011 at Washington Baptist University and was really introduced to the Promise Program at that time. I want to share something with you. As of uh, just last week ago today, the governor of Tennessee in his state of the state address mentioned that the state of Tennessee is going to pass legislation to introduce the Tennessee Promise, and that is going to start in 2015. Uh, they are projecting, according to the report, and here is their website, they are projecting uh, 25,000 students will apply, and their stipulations are somewhat different, but any student who graduates from a school in Tennessee uh, who wish to attend a community college or to pursue their associate's degree, uh, they will be fully funded. Uh, so this thing is catching on. There's a trend going on. People are seeing now that there's a need for this type of promise program since we're starting to see a little, a lot of decline in student loans and, and payroll rates. Just wanted to show you the dropout rate just in comparison. If you look at El Dorado back when they started this promise program in 2006, that dropout rate was at 8%. 
since the, since the Promise Program, their dropout rate is at 1.7%. And, and you can see by comparison, the state of North Carolina is in the red bar, and Cleveland County is in the red and gold bar, and see where we are. So even though we're on a decline, we're not quite where this Promise Program is, and we would like to get there. Just a couple of things that I was telling you about, about the hindrance or the difficulties is for families to get student loans and Pell Grants. Um, we all see, according to the data statistics, uh, student loan debt when these young men and women graduate from high school or graduate from college, they'll probably project to be a little bit over $35,000 in student loan debt. That's sad that you know students are leaving school with that type of debt. What's even worse is the government, the United States government has cracked down on PLUS loans. PLUS loans is a loan where the parent will be able to use their credit scores and their credit history and their finances to help proceed with the loan for their students. The government has passed a, a, a policy now that it makes it very difficult to get uh, uh, student uh, parent PLUS loans. Uh, they've taken in consideration if you're 90 days delinquent, uh, bankruptcies, uh, you know, garnish wages, so forth and so on. We all know we just went through a tough economy. And so as a result of it, it's affecting a lot of schools, mainly the HBCU schools, which are the historical black colleges and universities. Uh, and according to their numbers, uh, they have lost over 25,000, 22,000 students in one year because of the fact that the kids couldn't, the parents couldn't get student loans to send them to college. So these are reasons why these promise programs are much needed. Just quickly here, I, I want to focus on, this is the demographics of Cleveland County when we started doing this, and I want to focus on the last one. 42% of our Cleveland County students do not qualify for a Pell Grant or a North Carolina lottery because of their family household income is $50,000 and higher. Now, even though that's even, that's a sad number, uh, what's even more devastating, according to the Secretary of uh, Assistant, uh, the, Second, the State of Education Assistant Deputy Director, Pell grants and lottery grants have gone down in awards. I know when typically it's around $5,500 for a Pell Grant and about $3,500 max for a student loan, I mean, I'm sorry, a lottery scholarship. Now, according to Mr. Cock, who's the deputy director, a combined, if you go to a North Carolina public university, combined, the maximum amount you can get an award is $3,795. Now, if you go to a community college, it seems like you're rewarded a little bit more, which I have no disagreements with, but you you qualify for $4,445. So you start to see a decline also, but you see that number, that 42%, that's a very devastating number to the parents and hardworking people here in Cleveland County who work, they make just enough money not to qualify for any type of government assistance, but they don't make enough to be able to send their kids off to college and, we should, the, the criteria for sending our kids to college should not be whether or not they can afford it. It should be whether or not they qualify to get into schools. I'll pass through the, el the eligibilities of it. Uh, I think everybody uh, kind of knows the eligibilities of it. And as you can see, like I said, I highlighted the number in 2011. Uh, UNC Chapel Hill was 7311, I believe it is. Now it's 8340, so that's less than two years. Um, here are some of the requirements as well. One of the things that, I, that our Promise Program have that uh, other programs do not have, in fact, the El Dorado Promise is going to adopt our program. We make it mandatory for every student before they graduate and receive this Promise Program. They have to take the money, money skills, money in the online program. We're providing that free to the students. We're providing it free to the family members. Anyone in Cleveland County who wants to participate in this, it's online, they can do it on their own pace, and it's worked as a module. In addition to that, uh, El Dorado, the Arkadelphia Promise, has a requirement of attendance. Uh, we'll start off in the first year, but once we're funded, the students must attend 85% of uh, ninth grade to high school, uh, and then we'll kind of graduate that up to about 90% requirement on attendance. Um, in addition to all the other requirements, uh, you know, we don't pay for summer school. What we want to do is encourage the students to come back and 
give back to the community by volunteering at a local nonprofit organization. We're trying to teach them to be responsible, uh, but also networking and build resumes so when they do graduate from college, and if all things are even between them and another student getting a job, we all know that the companies always look at what is your community involvement? What are you doing in the communities that you serve? So hopefully this will be a plus for them. Um, talk about the support center. Uh, we will have career financial advisors at each school to, to help the kids with resumes, to help them with scholarships, help them with the applications, help them with pretty much anything that needs set up visits for school. Kind of help the counselors, they add, just give a little extra to the counselors who are working so hard to make sure that these, these students are going off to college. Uh, these are the resources and the evaluations. One of the things that the career and financial advisors will do that will be a benefit to the school board and the Chamber of Commerce and everybody around, we will be able to track data. Right now, we have no idea when our kids leave Cleveland County. We, we do not really know where they're going. Uh, so one of the things that we want to do is continue to track the students know where they are so that way if we have a kid, a family from Cleveland County out in California, we have a kid want to go to UCLA and we have a family out there, hopefully we can reach out to that family and say, hey, can you be a mentor to this student? Or if we have businesses who have contributed to this to say, hey, can you help out and maybe give this kid a, a student an internship? So we will be a, this will be a valuable resource to us moving forward. Uh, that's pretty much it on the Promise Program um, I just want to add one, a couple of things. Since over the last couple of years, I've been doing this and working around uh, my position. Uh, I serve as Vice President of Government Relations and External Affairs for a company in Greenville, South Carolina. My primary job is doing legislation across the country. Uh, and so when I talk to people about what we're doing in Cleveland County, they're excited. And, that, and I've had a number of counties and a lot of people here in North Carolina, as well as in other states, have asked me to come and give presentations and help them to create this program. What I've said to them is I'm not creating the creating program until I get my program running up in Cleveland County, then we'll work with you. Um, so that's just an added note that people are excited about this. And you can see by the, the state of uh, Tennessee with the governor using this as his address. What we're asking now for the school board, one of the things that we want to do, if this is up here, uh, you have in your package an overview of what we would like to do to kind of kick our fundraising efforts off. We want to do a program called the Links of Learning. Uh, and the goal is to break the Guinness World Record for the largest paper chain link uh, by a team. And we want to get the community involved, we want to get the school system involved, we want to get the kids involved. And our goal is to, to make us, the, the current record is 54.33 miles. We want to create 55 miles of chain link, and we call them the links of learning, LOL, uh, sort of the language that the kids speak. And we want to, we want to raise a total of $5.5 million to get this started. 55 miles, $100,000 uh, per mile. Each chain link will be 10 inches in diameter. Each inch is a dollar, so you can buy a full chain link for $10. So we have come up with this concept and this idea, and what we're simply asking the school here today is to simply give us permission to go talk to the counselors, go talk to the principals in the school, get them excited, get their input, and then maybe at your next board meeting, we will have a full proposal as we, uh, as we move forward. We'd like the students to be involved in the fundraising in their communities. It may just get information out to their parents um, churches, any kind of organizations that they're in, but also uh, any kind of grassroots funding on like this is going to be starting out at, um, is also bolstered by the fact that if you guys show interest, if the community shows interest, we can do matching donations from for grants and from uh, trusts and things that uh, we can take this grassroots and the excitement and take it to uh, you know, some big money and say, look, well, this is how excited we are. We want you to buy into the program, too. So, thank you. And uh, she could have put it in better than I could. And one of the things, we have gotten commit, some commitments from outside uh, with 
my job and the people that I network with on a regular basis, their mindset is, look, if we see the community excited about it, if we see they have some input, and I've shared a number of these with Dr. Boyles and a couple of members on here, we've got people from the outside of the county, who, uh, outside the state, who's wanted to, who want to help and jump in, but they need to see that the community is excited about it and the community is involved in it. So I think with our relationship with the national media, um, as a result of the Shelby Star paper uh, uh, article that ran uh, Super Bowl weekend about me holding the Super Bowl trophy, I got a call from w, uh, WCCB in, in Charlotte, and they ran an article. I mean, they ran a story uh, two days later. So if people are starting to see it and people are excited about it, we just need to get the local community excited and educate them. In addition to the Promise Program, just to throw it out, we would like to, at some point in time, have four community town hall meetings uh, in Upper Cleveland, in Crest District, in Shelby District, and in and, uh, Kings Mountain District, where we invite the public out and, and educate them on it and give them an opportunity to ask questions and get involved. But does that literally affect every single student?
ready for November of 2012, and we were told it would take about 18 months before we get something back. Uh, we got a letter saying that, hey, we're in receipt of your application uh, around a month later, and in March of 2013, we got our nonprofit status. So, you know, they did not come back and ask for any, us for any additional information. We had all of our eyes down and all our teams were on the I think it's, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think it's a very um, impressive thing that you've done so far. Um, I think you've already done a lot of labor with Dr. Bowles, and I'm interested to see how it's going to take shape. Um, I'd like to, you know, like you said, get all the keys, eyes and eyes and all that stuff. I especially like the LOL name. Things are learning. I mean, you know, being from this generation, I think it's going to be catchy, and I think it is um, a very, um, it's, it's a lofty goal, um, but I think what they did in the El Dorado and across the country is very lofty. Who, who better than Cleveland County? Why not us? So, you know, I applaud you guys. Here. I won't take credit for the El Dorado. Believe it or not, it was a Shelby High student who came up with it. So, you know, the, the, the students that we, uh, and I'm from, you know, the kids were burning, so I'm you know, for all the kids. <laughs> I'm kind of new for all that, but, you know, we've been. So, you know, kids are already having some